Greetings. We are uh, back on the Real Work uh, Show podcast. And uh, this is Lisa Lung. We've been uh, having a conversation. We just got done. Uh, she just survived the lightning round. And uh, now we're going to have a little bit of a, a longer conversation. So for those of you that have a slightly longer attention span than five minutes. Sound good, Lisa? Sounds good. Awesome. So um, one thing that I thought was interesting, you were talking about kind of how you ended up getting involved in photography in the first place. And, uh, and one thing you were talking about was this kind of double-edged sword of, it sounds like things are pretty fast moving, uh, lots of change and needing to adapt. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that, kind of what you enjoy about that and where are the challenges? Sure, yeah. So the challenge of having to always distinguish yourself, make yourself unique. Right. In this realm, I'm speaking specifically to fashion, where there's a lot of duplication, imitation going on. It, it definitely challenges the creative side of me, right. which I know as, as, I, as I'm being pushed to do that, I see the work I produce and something I can be proud of. Right. But yeah, the challenging side of that is it is tiring and um, you can never rest on your laurels. It's always a push to go forward. So yeah, definitely a balance there to oh, me. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that, that's one thing I think is interesting. You know, one of the questions I, I shot at you in the lightning round was was kind of along those lines of, every, you know, everybody thinks they're a, a professional photographer. They get out their iPhone or their Android and they snap a photo and put a filter on. And so, yeah. um, so that, that's an interesting piece. So, so basically, you've got to use your creative juices and try and show something a little bit different than what the average, what the average person might see, right? Yeah, and you know, it, it dep it's up to the photographer as they develop a body of work. When a client scrolls through them, what's the wow factor there? And it'll become more and more apparent as they refine their work. It could be anything, right? Somebody could be capturing really awesome architecture. Right. And it could be an angle that they do, a creative angle. Maybe it's a really moody edit or yep. maybe a um, different color that they're putting the urban landscape in. But yeah. There's definitely something in everyone's work. Right. So, so I imagine, I know you've been doing this for, for a number of years now, but when you first started, like, did you ever catch yourself, uh, you know, being critical of your own work? Did you, ever, did you ever, ever find yourself looking at your photos and saying, anybody could have snapped that photo? Like, you know, you got to do better. Did that happen or not really? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Especially when you're starting out, it's it, because of social media and Pinterest and stuff out there, you, you can't help but compare yourself, right, to someone sure. who's way more advanced, has way more experience. So it's, it's a little deflating, uh, but what helps is the passion you have for the work. It just propels you forward instead of turning it into negative. You think positively, like, I'll get there someday. Right, right, right. And, and so that's actually kind of an interesting one, too. How about feedback on your work? Like, so I guess the, the obvious one is if you're doing work for a client, I'm sure they give you some feedback. Um, is there anything specifically you've done to try and to try and solicit that kind of feedback? Like, hey, what do you, what do you guys think about you know, my, my approach to photographing this? I, I guess outside of the typical client's interactions. Yeah, so actually during the pandemic, the lockdown, there was a period where I couldn't do much creative work. So what I did was to connect with other photographers on Instagram. Yep. They can be a little more objective. So I just shoot them a message, say, hey, you know, I'm also a photographer. Would you mind just giving me five minutes? We can do a quick coffee Zoom chat and ask each other some questions, provide some constructive feedback. And right. overall, it was met with a pretty positive response because they were like me. They were also locked down and <laughs> looking for right. something. Right. So, so the whole the, the pandemic opened some interesting opportunities, interesting conversations. That's right. So, so any other, that's actually an interesting one too, this, uh, this coronavirus situation. Um, any, any ways you've had to change the way you, you work? I, I guess what I'm imagining is, you know, you, you might have photographed something and, and now with social distancing and, and things like that, you, know, you see people fo being photographed wearing masks. Right. You've been impacted by that kind of thing? Oh, for sure. So uh, when it was a lockdown situation, um, myself and other photographers, we started doing long distance shoots like through Zoom calls and Google Hangouts. Really? So the model would be holding a phone or a laptop in front of them and we would be directing them through a meeting like this one, telling them how to pose, where to go, where to find light. And it's definitely taken off as a trend. Um, Amazing. 
social media, you can see the different amazing work people have been able to create. That's and incredible. it opens up an opportunity for you to work with models, you know, that live far away from you, you would not have otherwise had the opportunity to work with. Wow. That, that's incredible. Yeah. I, and, and that's, I, I, is the, is the actual quality of the, of the output the same or do you, do you get reduced quality because now it's going through zoom and things like that or sure reduced quality uh it's very grainy images but there's a charm yeah. to that right because everyone's kind of struggling with the same even right. you watch ESPN or major news channel networks everyone's kind of having these grainy backgrounds uh, but yeah again it's a new creative curveball that people have to adapt to um, and then to, on the wedding and couple photo shoot side, I've, ha I've shot weddings where people are wearing masks, I'm wearing gloves, I'm wearing a mask, and <laughs> we're, we're keeping distance from each other. But yeah, it's just a new reality to adapt with and see what you can come up with. Isn't that interesting? I, I, that, that's, that's what I hadn't thought a lot about, uh, other than, like I say, seeing some people being photographed wearing masks. But that, no, that's really interesting. Um, one thing I think is interesting, you know, obviously th this show, one of the purposes of this show is to talk about what the work is really like uh, that people are doing, uh, not just what people's perceptions are. I guess this is one where if somebody said photographer, everybody would know you're probably snapping pictures. Can, can you expand a little bit on, on some of the other things that, that you know, you're doing during the average day other than just uh, actually you know, taking pictures? Right, so there's definitely the creative side but there's also the business side of the work. And as the business develops, more and more time will need to be devoted to that. So drafting up contracts, um, contacting a client, it's really important to prepare beforehand to understand their expectations. So you approach it like any other project, you know, what, what is it that they want from this shoot? What is the look and feel? What is the styling? What are their expectations of you and timing? Um, and then communicating with them, right? It's just because once the shoot finishes, it's not like the conversation ends. And then right. it's about when are they getting their photos? Do they want some sneak peeks and things like that? And if uh, they really like the images you deliver, they want additional images. Well, how are you going to price that out? Right. So all the nitty gritty stuff that's not so much the creative, but just as important. And then in addition to that, marketing yourself, um, a lot of the photographers I know, they're growing through Instagram. Okay. And Instagram, we know, has you know, millions upon millions of users and photographers. So finding ways to market yourself, whether it's through using you know, built-in Instagram reels, Instagram stories, or paid ads, or um, asking for your clients to give you shout outs, different ways of you know, trying to get yourself out there. Right, and, and so is there one of those ways you know, obviously, my wife and I have been a client of yours. We're, we're, we're friends, but we've also, also been a client. So other, other than people like me, you know, previous clients raving about if you want photography, you got to talk to Lisa. Um, have you found any of those methods to be kind of the, the, the big one that you found to be like your main strategy to acquire new clients? Or is it a, a bit of a hog, you know, a, a bit of everything? For myself personally, um, word of mouth is always really powerful stuff because people within your immediate circle of course they trust your recommendations and also if someone sees a photo of a friend and say hey how, you know who took that photo of you right. and then come that way so those are my two main ways but i definitely know of other methods out there there's people who have run uh contests offered special deals and uh yeah you can get super creative with the marketing side for sure that's, that's amazing. You, you just gave me kind of an idea. I, I don't know if it's something that, that you could do at some point, but um, there's probably, there's probably a whole business around pho photography for LinkedIn. Um, I remember a while back um, when, when you and I did a, a shoot together because I wanted to refresh my professional photos for things like LinkedIn. Um, but you know, you see a lot of not fantastic LinkedIn photography. I, I mean, not necessarily the most creative thing. Everyone looks the same, just substitute the face, but they have the same poses and everything. Right. Might, might be an opportunity there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Everybody's got the, you know, three quarters face looking at the camera. And yes. Arms like this. <laughs> exactly. 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 This, this is my favorite, like the one, you know, where <laughs> looking like a boss. Uh, that's, that's great. Um, the, the, the piece about, about branding, I think is interesting too. Um, back to this idea of, of standing out. You've talked about that a couple of times about this idea of, 
you know, as you've done more and more work, you kind of figure out, I guess, who you are as a, as a photographer. That, that's what I'm understanding. What, what would you say is, is your brand? How would you describe your brand? If someone says, what kind of photographer is, is Lisa? Right. So when it comes to my fashion work, I would say very feminine, very romantic, very ethereal with a, a bit of a fashion edge to it. And then for my family, wedding, lifestyle stuff, uh, very warm, very genuine. I like to capture things in the moment, not, not so much posed. Right. And incorporate the setting. So th those are the two things I've kind of developed. And based on my own uh, introspection and based on other people's feedback. So. Very cool. Uh, how about um, if somebody is interested in getting into, into this kind of career, like um, let's say they want to do it as a side hustle, um, you know, that if somebody has no experience in it, that's probably a good way to start versus quitting your job and tomorrow saying you're a photographer. I'm guessing that's probably good advice. Definitely. Definitely. It, make it a transition, not a cold turkey break. <laughs> right. Right. So any, any specific, um, education courses or anything like that, that, that you did or that you've, you know, that you've heard that you think would be valuable for someone or, or, you know, or has your, your method has been more kind of organic, just jump into it and get experience and, um, you know, learn from, from critique and things like that. Yeah, that's been mine. Just learn as I go. Uh, if there's something I'm not clear about, look up a tutorial on this topic. I mean, you can find tons of tutorials out there for free or for a low fee. Um, and I, I know other photographers that have taken the more traditional route of going to school full time and learning and that works for them, you know, nothing against that. But uh, for me, because I do have a full time job, it, it, it is more of an organic process of just learning as I go. Right. And, and is this something, Lisa, that you can see, um, you know, over a period of time um, moving into full time. I know you spend a lot of time doing it now and, and have over the last few years. Th this is the kind of thing you can see as a full time job for yourself or more side hustle? Uh, for now, side hustle, but who knows, right? The future. <laughs> Ab absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Hey, on the, uh, on the equipment topic. So that, that's also something I think is kind of, kind of interesting. So um, a couple thoughts. Uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, obviously, in terms of importance of equipment, a camera is pretty important uh, and lenses are pretty important. Um, anything else? And then, and then, you know, give people some idea of, of, uh, of really kind of, is there like a base level dollar amount that should, should you know, I'm thinking like startup capital for a business. Is it, is it like if you want to get into this job, look, you're going to spend this amount of money to get kind of a, a ground floor set of equipment or technology? Any right. advice you give? Well, based my own, on my own experience, I always uh, went with the cheapest option because uh, you can have equipment that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and still right. have really bad photos. It's honestly about managing the artistry, right? Uh, like I've seen people take amazing shots with just an iPhone camera. Um, so it's all about lighting, perspective, your subject, cropping. There's so much other elements that go into it other than just the equipment itself. Um, but just to start off, I would encourage people to look for secondhand things on Kijiji, on eBay, or even uh, most camera stores will have a rental option. So if they want to, you know, if they're not sure if they want to commit to something that costs a lot, they can also test it out for a weekend with right. a rental. Um, borrowing stuff. I mean, <laughs> I've done it all and it just slowly built up my inventory as, you know, more, uh, financially paid gigs come in. Right, right. So, so you can you can start it pretty pretty thrifty. You can start it pretty cheap. That that that's good to know. Yeah. Lisa, you used one expression um, in our in our prior session that I thought was interesting. You know, you were talking about at the end of the day that you want to be happy tired. What, what, what does happy tired mean to you? Happy tired is knowing that I executed the plan knowing that the client is happy, knowing that I made them comfortable, and knowing that all my creativity was spent. <laughs> right. I, got, I, I didn't leave anything behind, just spent it all. And uh, not having any regrets, not thinking, oh, I should have done that. Oh, I could have pushed that thing a little further. Right. But that feeling of, okay, I, I did it to the best of my abilities and I can just walk away from it now. That's, that's awesome, that's awesome. 
Lisa, uh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for this conversation. Um, I, I, you know, I, I learned a lot. I'm sure other people that are interested in, in uh, photography and, and pursuing this kind of career, I'm sure they learned a lot too. Um, how can people get more information about your, your work? If people want to engage you uh, just, to, just to see more of what you've done. Oh, Instagram would be the fastest and easiest way. Uh, all my latest work is up there, my website, of course. Um, but if they want to shoot me a quick message or just see my work, Instagram is the way to go. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, obviously, all that information will be available on this video. If you want to check out Lisa's work, it's, it's wonderful. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. And uh, thanks to everyone for, for checking out this video. And be sure to tune in for the next episode of Real Work. Bye, everyone.